Welcome back to When Harry Met Board Games, where we feed our people with relatable content and our victory condition is your satisfaction. I'm Harry and don't forget to subscribe and also to click on that bell button so that when we are doing our thing on this channel, YouTube lets you know and you don't miss a thing. Today we will continue our classic board game series and today's game that I will be highlighting will be Magic the Gathering and these right here these dual decks mine versus might and Inventors versus elves and a couple other Dual decks that I have in my collection are the way that I play Magic the Gathering many people out there who are familiar with the Magic the Gathering It's very much a lifestyle game for some people It's pretty much the only game they know and it's been a game that's been very successful for nearly 30 years now. So first of all, let's talk about the designer, Richard Garfield. And Magic the Gathering is, for the most part, his claim to fame. Although Richard Garfield has been very successful throughout the decades and has kind of reinvented himself in recent years to some extent, putting up uh, new, new products and new game releases. But this is the game that really made him a household name for many people. And again, in particular, for people who were fans of just Magic the Gathering. Now the interesting history about this game is it was released in 1993 and the story goes or the urban legend tells that what had happened was that Richard Garfield had been working perhaps for like a decade or so on his design of Robo Rally, the very popular um, program movement game. And he had been working on it and he wanted it to be released. So he went to Wizards of the Coast and what happened was that they wanted him to also produce a smaller type game for their company, for their line of games, that would help create some revenue in order to invest it towards the Robo Rally design. So he designed Magic the Gathering. And lo and behold, almost 30 years later, and the game that most people are familiar with out of the two is not Robo Rally, but it's Magic the Gathering. So it's funny that in the original story, Magic the Gathering was just a stepping stone to bring Richard Garfield to Robo Rally. But at the end of the day, Magic the Gathering has been uh, the biggest, the peak or the zenith of his gaming design. Now, Magic the Gathering really brought about a craze in the mid 90s, mid to late 90s, of collectible card games. Um, bringing this idea of purchasing, you know, products, continued purchase of products, hoping to get rares and ultra rare uh, ca uh, cards for your collection, not knowing what you're gonna get, for the most part getting, uh, most part getting repeated commons over and over again, but hoping that with every pack you might get one nice rare or maybe even an ultra rare copy of a card. And in and of itself, that collectible thing kind of became a game, right? A game within the game. Some people didn't care so much about actually playing the game. It was all about purchasing these cards, keeping them in mint condition perhaps, and hopefully selling them at some time in the future for a profit or for more money. I don't know. So lots of other people kind of jumped on the bandwagon, jumped on that train of collectible card games. And there was tons and tons of collectible card games that were designed in the mid to late 90s. And most of them did not meet with a lot of success, right? So first of all, Richard Garfield himself kind of piggybacked on his own idea in the mid 90s of Magic the Gathering and tried to catch lightning in the battle, bottle again by designing Netrunner. And Although that original iteration of Netrunner did have a cult following, it clearly wasn't nearly as successful as Magic the Gathering from a financial or marketing perspective. And it kind of died out and then resurfaced again in recent decades with Android Netrunner, right? Where Fantasy Flight took their Android universe that they had already been working on and created and they took the Netrunner game, made some tweaks and changes, applied it to their uh, Android universe, and voila, we have Android Netrunner, which for many years was a very successful game for the Fantasy Flight line of living card games. So we also have some other um, successful uh, attempts to recreate this craze with the collectible card games in games such as Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, these were the only two, I guess, 
that were able to create that massive success that Magic the Gathering has also had. There might be some games, again, that had a cult following that lots of people will vouch for as being great games, better than these other collectible card games, but they never quite met with the same success that Magic the Gathering, Pokemon, and Yu-Gi-Oh! have. So, again, Richard Garfield, he, he was on to something, and, of course, along with Wizards of the Coast, and they were very successful, and it kind of sparked a new genre within the board game hobby that not only was innovative in and of itself, but also was a launching point for some other genres that would come in future years. And speaking of these genres that have their genesis in the collectible card game idea, there is none more clear and more directly traced back to the collectible card game than the living card game, which I had just alluded to earlier with Android Netrunner, the LCGs as they call them. And the LCG is a term that's been coined particularly from Fantasy Flight Games. I don't think, I think they've um, copyrighted and patented in that, that term so that others cannot use it. So, and basically the difference between a living card game and a collectible card game, there's lots of similarities. It's, it's card games that have lots of content for them and play a similar idea than uh, some of these collectible card games that they play. Usually, usually, not always, they're two players, very tactical, and so on and so forth. There's some deck building involved or deck construction going on where you look at different cards and you create your own deck based on whatever standards and limitations are agreed upon by the community or by the tournament scene. But the difference, the key difference between the CCG, the collectible card game, and the LCG is that with the living card game, you know what you're getting. You have a fixed product that regularly cycles and brings in new fresh material, but you know exactly what you're going to get. If your friend bought an expansion to an LCG and you buy the same expansion, you're going to have the same exact cards. And if you don't, call the publisher and complain because something went wrong. So that is really the idea. And for me, for example, while I can see the appeal to the collectible aspect of things, and I've fallen myself in that trap, especially with Dice Masters in the past, I love the idea of control and knowing what I'm going to get. I want to get lots of content for uh, my games, right? I like the idea of replayability and all that stuff. But knowing that I'm, if I want to get an amazing card because it's in an expansion, I am guaranteed to get it. I think it's really cool. And the LCGs have been very, very successful for in the last 10 years or so for Fantasy Flight Games. And again, I think a lot of that success traces back to Fantasy, uh, to Magic the Gathering. And the fact that lots of these LCG fans at some point may or may have not converted from Magic the Gathering. So um, I'm sure lots of people, um, you know, their first introduction to card games might have been the LCGs. But again, I think there's a big sector of the population that they started with Magic the Gathering and then kind of looked at these LCGs that are comparable and said, hey, let's give these a shot. So the LCG is a genre of sorts that can trace its history and its origin back to Magic the Gathering. Now, another genre that has that owes its existence very much so to Magic the Gathering is the deck building genre. And for the last 12 years or so, Deck building has been a very popular mechanism. I would love to do some research and see if it's been the mechanism that perhaps uh, the nuance or specific mechanism, because there are some things that are much more generic, that has had the most implementations of games being, being pushed out every year with that mechanism. I'm sure Worker Placement would probably compete as well. Deck building has been so popular, and when you look at these deck building games, especially some of the first deck building games that came out on the market, games like uh, Dominion and Ascension and Marvel Legendary Star Realms, these games were designed by people who not only were Magic the Gathering fans, but in most cases, these guys were Magic the Gathering tournament players, tournament champions, and some have even been involved in the design of specific Magic the Gathering cards. So the correlation is so obvious and so plain, right? You, you see it. 
And again, lots of people who were fans of Magic the Gathering were easily attracted to what deck builders had to offer. This idea that you're going to construct a deck. These people love constructing a deck. They love looking at cards and figuring out which ones are going to make the most efficient and optimal deck for me to win. The deck building kind of flipped the script and said, we're going to figure it out as we go. As we play, we're going to respond and react to what's going on and acquire the cards and build our deck. And for Magic the Gathering players, it was a lateral step and it was something easy to transition into and just has them hooked. And again, with the whole, back to the whole LCG argument, lots of these deck building games lend themselves to lots of expansion content. And again, it's not the collectible card model where you don't know what you're going to get. You know exactly what you're going to get. So you can buy more cards to add more options to your games. And that was really, really neat. So deck building games definitely owe their existence to Magic the Gathering. I'd like to talk about my personal experience with the game Magic the Gathering. I am a recent Magic the Gathering convert. I started playing Magic the Gathering about three years ago. Um, and in the context of what's almost a 30-year history of it being out there, that's a blip, right? And most people watching this video probably have been playing Magic the Gathering for 10, maybe even 20 years. But when I played it, I was so satisfied with its experience that it very quickly jumped to a very high ranking on my overall games of all time list. But the thing about Magic the Gathering is I had heard about it for years. Obviously, I'd seen it in stores. But the thing is, I always imagined, especially before I was a gamer, but even after I first became a gamer, I always imagined that it was more complex than what it was. I always had the impression that it was a little bit more difficult. And also the idea of collectibles, which was something that didn't really appeal to me, um, especially back then, it, all of that turned me off and intimidated me from the prospect of trying this game out. But when I had heard that they had these dual decks and that they were already pre-constructed decks, I figured, hey, that would be a good entry point, a good way of experimenting with the game and an affordable way of getting into there, right? So, you know, for like 20 bucks, you get a pretty good dual deck, 20, 25 bucks. So I invested in it, bought my first dual deck uh, and started playing with it. And I really, really liked it. It was really satisfying. And again, not as complex and as complicated as I thought it was. Now, yes, there's lots of text and the new additions that come out are really helpful because what they do for you is all these special keywords have a definition in the parentheses for you, right? So you don't have to always go online and do the research. What does this keyword mean versus that keyword? Because there's so many different keywords. But sometimes for the more nuanced details that you may or may not understand, you still could be benefited by researching that stuff. But it's not absolutely necessary for each and every decision. So it's pretty streamlined as far as that's concerned. Again, with the definitions of what the keywords do. And it just, it's, it's really, really cool. It's really fun. Uh, I haven't really flirted with the deck construction aspect of it. But I am toying with, with playing around with that a little bit in the near future. But yeah, the game was an instant hit for me. I cannot play with everybody I game with. I have a handful of people. Uh, less than a handful of people that I play this game with. But when I do, I have a really, really good time. And finally, I like to wrap up by talking about the future of this game. I think the future of this game is in really good hands. I mean, it's already made it to that status where it's going to be almost impossible to stop selling this game, right? Unless some sort of catastrophic, catastrophic event occurs that I cannot foresee that would wipe out you know millions upon millions of hardcore die hard magic the gathering fans i cannot see why this game would stop selling right and i love the fact that they continue to reinvent themselves continually uh investing in different art designs and different ways of, pre of presentation creating new uh packs they have a new set every so often and with those sets, they have their, their starting box and they have all of their different boosters. They continue to do things like these dual decks, these commander decks to spread their influence and hopefully reel in a few new gamers into the world of Magic the Gathering. So yeah, I just see, I foresee continued success 
for this game and for this franchise for years and years to come. And that's it, folks. Thank you so much for joining us here on Harry Met Board Games. Check out one of these videos that you see on the screen. If YouTube is showing them to you, it's because they think there's a really good chance that you will like them. Also, check in the description down below to see the link to my Patreon account and see how you can be a patron so that you can support this channel and be more involved with the creative process. Check and research a tier that works for you. This is Harry saying take care everybody, stay safe, stay, stay healthy, and have fun gaming. Bye-bye.